Greetings, brothers and sisters. Just about to check. Oh, hold on, hold on. That's just an advert. Just want to verify that the sound is okay. Prevents me from flowing for a long time in vain. That's all right. Welcome. Ujambo. Karibu. Akwaba. Memoache. Ahlan Nangadef, Sac Passe qui j'en Bonjour. What's up, y'all? Yes, yes, y'all. That is life. Now, in France, don't get me wrong, there are plenty of people who claim to be chemetic, and the majority of them are a disgrace. Um, I just don't want to be uh, confused with them. I don't want people to misunderstand me thinking that I am one of them. Uh, they support and defend rapists, um, scammers, liars, and their behavior overall is that of lazy individuals who spend most of their time disrespecting um, Abrahamic believers, particularly the Christians. There's no need for that. And I'm not talking about saying things in response to some verbal attacks. I'm talking outright, unprovoked disrespect. That's not the way to go. It doesn't help. But really, I don't want to dwell too much about the so called comedic people in France. The majority of them are Pan Africans, and Pan Africans. <sighs> Not the great, greatest people to follow, very gullible, defending black people just for the sake of it, just because they are black. There are so many things. But let's be diplomatic. I could say names. I could describe situations. I guess for the most part, you already know the deal. But one of the funniest thing with these so-called comedic people spend their time dissing the Abrahamic believers, particularly the Christians. They are the same ones who celebrate Quenza. Quenza is one of the greatest fraud coming out of an African slash African centered people. It is. What is funny is that when you inform some people who are not aware that Kwanzaa is the Jewish Hanukkah, sorry, the Jewish holiday Hanukkah that was plagiarized, you hear excuses. Yeah, but at the end of the day, we need something. You hear it all. The same excuses that you bring for Kwanzaa, well, I guess the Christians can be justified with similar excuses. Either something is genuine, genuine, factual, historical, or it is not. Besides the holiday itself being a fraud, the person who came up with it, he don't necessarily have the nicest behavior in town considering that he was already the leader of a black organization. It's not like Mark Max before he was involved in the struggle for black people, because if you didn't know, for the rapist Pan-Africans in France, the French Pan-Africans like to make the parallel 
or comparison with Malcolm X, talking about Malcolm X going to jail. I even read one person writing, even Mandela went to jail. So basically they give names of black leaders who went to jail. And somehow in their brain, they equate that with someone who raped. Those leaders either went to jail before they were involved in the black cause, or they went to jail because of the involvement in the black cause. Which black leader do we know has been to jail for rape? There's one that is more or less known that went to jail for rape before he was involved in the black struggle. And when I found out by reading his book, I couldn't finish his book. And that was right at the beginning of the book where he, he came clean about his past. That's Eldridge Cleaver, Minister of Information of the Black Panther Party, the original Black Panther Party. Besides that, the next one that I heard with an alleged situation of rape was Karanga. Well, Dr. Quitter wrote Dr. York. Well, indeed. But his accusation is quite fishy. Do you think that he molested as much as they claim he did? And all those people were there and they knew about it? How come York is the only one who's in jail? Is it possible that York molested so many people and nobody knew about it? None of the children ever told their parents, their relatives, their friends. Isn't York the only one who went to prison for that? It's a touchy subject. Don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to defend people who did some wrong things to children or who committed sexual assaults, all right, whether it is towards children or not. But there's safe grounds to say that York's accusation are a bit seem a bit fishy. As, as for the rapes amongst Pan-Africans, there are several cases. And there's also one about pedophilia that is disgusting to me. And people know about it. But back to Karenga, the allegation was made by Dell Jones. And he mentioned that bottles were inserted inside the woman's vagina. The woman indeed, or the woman in questions, are the two females who were tortured by Karanga and his crew. That's the reason why Karanga went to jail. Some people today say that it's Contel Pro. So Contel Pro will make you torture a black woman. For how long, that's debatable, but for a good while. small and serious we can do better what do you think Kwanzaa is more or less established as a holiday in America it is celebrated in other places as well but in America it is quite established there's something else that is also touchy I've alluded to that a few times and that is the sensitivity when criticism is made towards African Americans sometimes some people take it as a an attack not yes 
sometimes people in America, black people in America, do take criticism as if it's a, a direct attack. And that is a shame because the criticism that is sometimes expressed by non-African Americans, or in other words, black people outside of America, is not directed at black people in America because they are African Americans, but they are directed because of some situations or behavior that they don't agree with. And this criticism is sometimes expressed in regards to black people living in Europe, black people living in Africa, and black people living elsewhere. So Kwanzaa is established as a holiday, unfortunately. What do we do now? Are we going to lose our life? I'm sorry. Are we going to lose our lives if we stop celebrating Kwanzaa? The people who make money out of Kwanzaa, of course, they will make many arguments as to why we should continue to celebrate it. But if we have logic and moral, should we continue to celebrate something that is fraudulent, that is passed off as an African holiday, but that is not an African holiday? And besides, that is plagiarized from the Jewish holiday Hanukkah? Some simple things, simple reasoning. What are we going to do with Kwanzaa? Are we going to continue to celebrate it? What is your stance on that, brothers and sisters? Let's just start with Kwanzaa. We have some people who went all the way to PhD, which means that they are intelligent people, clever people, smart people, yet they still celebrate Kwanzaa. How come? How come? Michelle Stern wrote more likely that they married children because grown women were in short supply due to men being allowed to have more than one wife. Are you the Michelle who tried to call the last time? RP wrote, no excuse, no reason for it. Dr. Kida wrote, no excuse to have intercourse with underage girls, especially having sex with their own relatives. No excuse. Marcus Garvey did so much. But I guess we're going to let that slide. Marcus Garvey left Jamaica, went to America, did his thing. It did not happen overnight. There was a documentary about Marcus Garvey. And they even say that maybe his first speech or one of his first speeches, but I think that might have been his first speech. He was so nervous that he lost balance and he fell to the ground. Can you imagine? People probably laugh and, but that's a lesson of persever perseverance. He, and he ended up having the largest known black organization Boasting over a million members, maybe close to two million. We'll have to check the numbers. The newspaper, the businesses, then the boat. And we know the rest, unfortunately, the accusation of mail fraud and whatever else. And then he was expelled, went to England and died over there. Apparently, he was hot tempered as well. Because he, well, anyway, I don't want to flow for too long. And then, and then the whole thing about it is that in Spain, we was black. So when we got up out of Spain, we came to the Americas and Christopher Columbus came to follow us next. 
Now, I come from Indian and Canaanite because my grandmother is from the Indians and she said, yo, we was never slaves. So I understand the part that you saying just as well. But since there was no photo ID and stuff like that back then, how they would change your genealogy. If you lived in a white area and you was black, they would even list you as white. This is how they took control. They took control of every area in a different way. This is why right. everybody needs to talk. Can I can I read what it says here? I don't know if this is what you saw, but there is um when I click on the first link, it says public regions. It's going actually to a Facebook page. And it's saying here, coming to America in bold, and then it put in um in 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 bracket, um Ta Mary. Then it says America was not named after a white man. When Egyptians spoke of the West in quotation and Westerners, they were referring to the Tamari. And then it yes. says the beautiful, hold on, let me read it for you. So that uh, the beautiful land of Meru, aka Moors. Yeah, Why that's Europeans? right. The Moors is from where? They was the black okay. Germans from Europe. The grandson is of St. Maurice came over with um George Washington. But then right. when the French came, they eliminated what the British had with blacks and whites getting along. The French messed that up. I come from the Huron okay. and the 